Hello YouTube, my name is Isabella and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be discussing my TBR for the Owls Freedathon. Now the Owls Readathon is such a cool readathon. It's planned by planned and hosted by G over at Book Roast. I'll have a link to the announcement video down below, but I'm sure you know what it's about. And it's this really cool readathon based off of Harry Potter and like the exams that they take. And I know I've mentioned struggling with Harry Potter and just more specifically JK Rowling, but this readathon brings me a lot of joy and I think we all could use a little bit more joy in our lives. I actually uh, found out a couple days ago that my job has been listed as essential so I have to work with the public and have to do it almost every single day. I just got off of a five day in a row series of shifts and it's been really stressful so I hope you're doing well. I hope you're coping and yeah so I want to talk about my TBR. I haven't actually picked a career because that's one of the things you can do with this readathon. I'm just going to pick a book from each prompt and then see what kind of career I'm feeling closer to finishing the readathon um, and I'm actually going to at least try to finish all 12 books. So yeah. Let's get into it. The first prompt is for Ancient Runes and you are supposed to read a book with a heart on the cover. I chose Crier's War by Nina Varela. There's a nice little heart right there. And I've been intending to read this ever since it came out. I'm incredibly excited to read it. It was also one of my five star predictions for my newest round of those predictions. So yeah, I'm excited for it. It features a cyborg girl and a human girl and they're like on the opposite ends of a war and they think there's a slow burn FF romance. The second prompt is for arithmancy and you're supposed to read a book outside of your favorite genre. My favorite genre is obviously fantasy so I'm going to pick Get a Life Chloe Brown by Talia Hibbert. This is an adult contemporary romance featuring a fat black chronically ill woman and I'm so excited to read it. I own it on my Kindle and I also think I have access to the audiobook. I'm incredibly excited to read it. I actually read like the first 20 pages one night when I was bored and couldn't sleep and I liked it. So I'm excited to read this story and I wanted to throw an adult contemporary on here because I know I could get through it incredibly quickly. The next prompt is astronomy and you're supposed to read a book just exclusively at night. I decided to throw myself a bone, give myself something easy, and I chose Paper Girls Volume 1 by Brian K. Vaughn and illustrated by Cliff Chiang. This is a graphic novel that focuses on these young girls and their paper route. I think it's set in the 80s and a lot of people have comped this to Stranger Things. So I'm interested to see if I like it. Um, there's been a lot of mixed reviews for it. so. I only have the first volume and I'll see if it's worth continuing. For Care of Magical Creatures, you are supposed to read a book with a creature with a beak on the cover and I chose King of Scars by Lee Bardugo. I mentioned this in my 20 books to read for 2020 but if I don't specifically force myself to read this book, I'm not going to pick it up because I'm really scared I'm not going to like it. There's been so many terrible reviews for it. I just don't think it's going to be very good. For Charms, you are supposed to read a book that it has a white cover and I chose An Unkindness of Magicians which literally only has white on the cover. This is an adult fantasy story that I believe could be read as a standalone but now there is a sequel coming out I think actually really really soon but it follows secret societies in New York and there's this like magical competition that comes around every 20 years to decide who's like in power and so a lot of people really really like this book. I'm incredibly excited to read it. It's rather short. It's an adult fantasy that can be read at least as a standalone so I figured that this was a good one for this readathon. For Defense Against the Dark Arts you are supposed to read a book that is set at the coast or by the sea and I chose The Deep by River Solomon and a couple other authors who I don't remember. This focuses on mermaids and while it's not set at sea, it is set in sea and I, it is also a novella so it's rather short so I can get through it quickly. I also own this on ebook and I'm actually really excited to read this because I own both of River Solomon's 
books on Kindle and I'm excited to see their work because a lot of people really hype them up. So the prompt for divination, you need to assign a number, random number generator to your TBR and pick that way. I've selected a couple of books and we're going to be picking from those. So the generator is going to be picking between these four books. There is Jade City, Invictus, Before She Ignites, and Crown of Feathers. I don't know why I decided to pick all chunky fantasy books for this prompt, but we're going with it. I have it set up here and I need to put these down. Hold on. And Jade City will be number one. Crown of Feathers will be book four. But uh, I don't know if you can see it, but generate. Did I click it? Yay. Number one. Jade City. I have been trying to get to Jade City for no word of a lie, like three years. I've wanted to read this since 2017. I just haven't picked it up. I've owned it on Kindle. I now own the physical copy and I'm so excited to be getting to it. The royal body double for the princess who's notoriously cruel and terrible. And I think this is meant to be a trilogy. The, la the next book is coming out this year and I'm just excited to give this a shot. For History of Magic, you are supposed to read a book with wizards or witches, and I chose The Amber Spyglass by Philip Pullman. This is the third and final book in the Northern Lights trilogy, and witches don't have a huge, huge role in this story, but they are definitely significant, and I think they might have a big role in this final book. I've just been so excited to finally finish this trilogy. I want to finish off the TV series as well and I think if I do this I'll be very motivated to finish the first season of The Golden Compass. What the hell is the show called? His Dark Materials. There we go. I'm an idiot. The series is called His Dark Materials. I believe the first book in the UK is The Northern Lights. That's why I called it The Northern Lights Trilogy. That was dumb. His Dark Materials. For Muggle Studies, you're supposed to pick a contemporary story, and I chose Darius the Great is Not Okay. This just follows a half-Iranian boy who suffers from OCD and depression, and then he actually goes to Iran and kind of struggles to connect with his roots, but then I also think he starts falling in love with a boy. So I'm excited for this. Ever since I found a copy of it used, I've just been so interested in reading it, and I think it should go by rather quickly. For potions, you're supposed to read a book under 150 pages, and I just decided to make my life easy, and I chose The Test by Sylvain Nouvelle. This is a novella that is, like, kind of, I think, dystopian, but it's based off of a citizenship test. I don't know. It's really short. Sounds really cool. A lot of people have given this like five stars glowing reviews for such a short book. I'm very intrigued. The final prompt is Transfiguration and you are supposed to pick a book that has shape-shifting in it and I could not think of one book for the life of me that had shape-shifting in it. None of the books that are on my TBR that include shape-shifting I really wanted to read at that point in time. And then I saw that Howl's Moving Castle by Diana Wynne Jones was mentioned on there and I know nothing about this book so I don't know if that's accurate. I also know there is the movie that is beloved as well but I haven't seen the movie. I never read the book as a child but I figured I should pick a middle grade that has crazy huge font and space between it. I'll read it really quickly and I'm interested in watching the movie. But a lot of people love it. It's a beloved story. So that is it for my Owls TBR. I really hope I am very successful at it. And this went decidedly better than my first attempt at filming it. A few days ago I tried filming after work and I was so rusty and nothing was coming out the way it was supposed to. And then I was going to try and salvage the edit and I opened the file and my voice sounded so odd that I just couldn't stand, could not stand myself for editing for like an hour and then having that be posted. I just, I couldn't. Anyway, I hope you are doing well. I hope you have a fun time if you choose to participate in this readathon. Let me know down in the comments below if you are participating, if you've made a post anywhere, I'll be sure to check out your TBR. And yeah, um, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it and I'll see you again soon. Bye.